tell you one thing that I fought during that time of uh, seeking God for the healing of my body. Um, Linda, my do youngest daughter that I lost in uh, uh, 96, died with cancer. And uh, the enemy, this thing up here can get you in trouble if you don't want to learn to control and catch down imaginations. And uh, it, uh, it would come to me all the time when I'd get into the Word or praying or whatever have you. Why do you think God would heal you when he didn't heal Linda? She was young. You're old. See, she had her life before her. But you know, I don't know why God didn't choose to heal Linda, but I do know that she's with the Lord. And, that, and that's a wonderful thing. But anyway, you have to find the things that go on in your, in your brain. Let me tell you, and that mind can really bring you into a bondage if you don't take control of it. So right now, let's take, uh, let's see how we're going to establish our heart. Number one, to the establishment of your hearts in the Word of God. Number one, you have to receive knowledge of the truth. How are you going to establish yourself without the knowledge? That's why it is so wonderful. And so great that you can be filled with the knowledge of God yeah. and with the knowledge of His will. You are having it ministered to you by a pastor that loves you and that is looking out for your soul and that is steering you into this in, into this depth yeah. of the Lord, where that you into the realm of walking in the Spirit, not fulfilling the desires and the lusts of the flesh. That's really the, the walk that we're commanded to do. All right, now receive the knowledge of the truth. Uh, let's look at James 1 and 22. James 1 and 22. Receiving the knowledge of the truth. But before we go there, I'll give you the scripture in 2 Peter that says, We are made a partaker of God's divine nature. Yeah. Amen. How do we partake of God's nature? How are you going to be a partaker of God's nature? We know we're born again. We're not of this uh, world. We're a new creation. We are uh, a species that never has been before. We're of the new Adam. Well, how, how many know that this morning? I know that you do. All right. Now, how? Look at what he has also made available that I no longer have that old nature. I am not a part of the old Adam. Old Adam was crucified. All right, but it's coming into the knowledge of these things to appropriate that knowledge in our lives and really know the reality of this. We're looking for the reality of being able to know that we're not the old creation. That sin does not have dominion over us. That's what the word says. Sin shall not have dominion over you. We're buried with him in baptism, raised uh, with him in the resurrection life. So the power and the life and the ability that works in me today and in you is not the old way, it's not the old life, but it is the resurrection life. It is not even natural life, it is resurrection life. Hallelujah. How could we be the weak and go back into the things over into the realm of darkness when we have at our fingertips such great promises that there is concerning our deliverance and walking in freedom. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. All right, now let's, let's look at that. We are made in the image of Christ. We are the new creation. He was the firstborn among many brethren. Yes. Right. Hallelujah. He was the first fruits of the resurrection. He's the firstborn among yes. many brethren. So now... He tells me in Peter that I am a partaker of God's nature. Yeah. Now you want to walk in holiness? That's the nature of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's, you don't have to strive to do this and strive to do that. All we have to do is believe who we are and claim it and walk in it. I am the righteousness of God in the earth. Now that will bring uh, that would bring persecution against you like it did Jesus when he said, I am the Son of God. I am the righteousness of God. Who's going to believe that? Uh, but they'll tell you you cannot cease from sinning. 
And you cannot walk in this. But watch what Peter said. By exceeding great and precious promises, we are a partaker of God's divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. We're no longer held in this body. But now walk in the reality of that is our minds now have to be renewed to the Word of God, to the reality of this word and the main thing that is keeping God's people held in the bondages that they have been delivered from is their unbelief and not understanding and knowing the promises of God. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So right now as Brother Matt said God is giving knowledge, to, I mean the knowledge of the Lord is coming into the church the revelation that Paul got when he went to the third heaven, that revelation right now is breaking forth into those that will receive it. Hallelujah. So the revelation of Jesus Christ is coming to us and it will change us. We, there is going to be the remnant that will walk in all the fullness of God. The fullness is here and there will be those that will partake and walk in this fullness. That's where my heart is set. That is what I want. I want the end of this. I want the to Jesus for the, the glory that was set before him and do it at the cross, despising the shame. But he made it. Why? Because he didn't look at the things in between. He looked at the end. I'm looking over here and I'm seeing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if I keep my eyes on him, I won't be destroyed by all these things around me. The children of Israel in the wilderness, if you'll remember when Moses made the serpent and put it upon the pole, what happened? The children of Israel were being bit by these serpents that were in the wilderness. And they wanted Moses to pray, God, take, it, take the serpents away. He said, I won't take the serpents away, but I will raise this serpent on the pole. Tell everyone that will look, will live. Hallelujah. All we got to do is look and live. Hallelujah. Look and be delivered. Look at Christ. He was the one that was coming. Hallelujah. Praise Glory. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Matt, if I get too long, you'll have to tell me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I've just got started, so I'll try to make it short. <laughs> so remember, we're partaking of God's divine nature through the knowledge of the Word, through yeah. His promises. And now, the next step to establishing you now, remember... Uh, if you're going to establish your heart, you're coming into the knowledge of the truth. Remember this. Number one, you've got to have the knowledge. And number two, you've got to believe. It ain't worth a cent to you if you don't believe it. It don't work unless you believe it. Hallelujah. In Second Chronicles, chapter 20, 17 through 20, he says, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. So now number two, uh, number one, receive the knowledge. Number two, believe. Now, Isaiah 7 and 9 says, If you will not believe, you shall not be established. All right. Come on. Now, what's the command of the Lord? Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord. Draweth nine. I do have one uh, uh, lesson on... Uh, uh, the, where the Lord told us so many times, fear not, fear not, fear not. And uh, I asked the question, Lord, how is it possible uh, not to fear because of uh, so many things that go on around? What is, the, what is the possibility of not being fearful? And uh, it was because that he has given us a command to be established. Let me tell you, if you're established upon the word of the Lord, you will not fear. You will trust and not fear. You will trust and obey. You will trust and be fulfilled.